Hey guys, Chad here with Apex Reviews. Just coming at you with this 2019 Ram 1500 Rebel equipped with the 5.7 liter e-torque engine. Now if you're looking at this video, you probably know that this e-torque engine has been kind of hard to come by in the, in the market just because it's just really hitting dealer lots. It's a relatively new powertrain, but it offers some great benefits to the end consumer. So stay tuned. We'll see if this new Rebel is a step change improvement over the old Rebel and really how this 2019 stacks up to the competitors. And before I get started, I'd like to do a special shout out to Feeney Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram here in Midland, Michigan for providing this 1500 Rebel for me to review. I have bought four or five cars from them and they've always treated me very fairly. Uh, I've always worked with uh, Mike Finelli there at the dealership. Great contact, low pressure sales. They've all, always given us a great price. Now I'll do a quick walk around on the truck here so you can get an idea of really what it looks like in this beautiful white color here. Provides a good contrast with the black on the bottom. This is just a standard bright white. Coming to the back, you'll see they still have the Ram text on the gate. You have a Rebel badging. 4x4. Four four. Nice Rebel badge. And then you actually have some smoke tips. These are actually a black tip. And please pardon the truck uh, being a little dirty here. It's just raining in Michigan. so. Can't really control the weather. Beautiful tail lights. These do have the sign block, or the side um, blind spot monitors, and this does have trailer detection as well. So if you have a 20 foot trailer behind here, in the past you'd actually have issues with the blind spot monitors would detect the trailer and therefore alert you on the mirror and inside through a tone. This one automatically detects the trailer size and kind of ignores the trailer. Now it's not going to detect cars that are in the trailer's blind spot, but it does completely ignore that to where cars are coming along your side and you can trust what you're getting. This is offered across various trims, so our Bighorn does offer this. I believe it's part of the level 2 package, which obviously this Rebel is equipped with. Now one thing you're going to find on the Rebel that you're not going to see in the other trims are these tires. These are stock. This is a 275-70 R18 Goodyear Duratrac. That is a um, great line they have here for this brake. It's following a nice body line. There's actually a crease there in the bodywork, so it doesn't look like an afterthought, I guess, that it was something that was kind of tacked on. I do believe that they formed this Rebel from the get-go to be just like this. In the previous generation, it almost felt to me like it was kind of tacked on. It was an afterthought. Things didn't look completely in place the bumper to me didn't look that good to be if i'm just being completely honest i mean it is a steel bumper just like it is here today but it just it looked odd to me so this one definitely in my opinion uh blends in a lot better it's got a good shape to it uh good colors i really like the contrast you get here it really has a kind of a stormtrooper effect to it so overall i think they hit it out of the park you do have the standard daytime running lamps the flicker is just uh kind of part of the camera there so Obviously these are steady on for me and they are a cool, the color that you're seeing now isn't completely accurate. They're not perfectly white. They actually have a slight, slight, slight blue hue to them. And then these are Rams LED headlamps. So I'll turn those on for you so you can see what they look like right now. So again, these are completely white to me with a slight, I mean, a slight blue hue and you do have LED fog lamps as well. So with the LED, that was always something in the market at least the automotive market seemed to have struggles struggle with was to get LED headlamps that projected well, um, just covering a great area. And if you did have them, they were typically on your pretty expensive luxury vehicles, such as a Porsche or a Mercedes, as an optional equipment in the few thousand dollar range. So now if FCA is bringing these to your consumer market and really a vehicle that a lot of people are buying with a reliable headlamp, such as LED, which doesn't have to be replaced like a standard HID does after you know X amount of years. We do have these headlights and our Bighorn as well, and I will say they provide great light coverage. You do have a pretty hard cutoff uh, going on the road, so they're not gonna get a lot of bleeding. So just know that. Uh, it's something to look on the, on the lookout for. It's just a kind of a side effect with LED lamps. There's just a hard cutoff if you don't have that bleed. Now continuing on, you do have these hood scoops here, and they are functional. That's nice. And then you have this other black accent panel up top. 
signifying that this one does have the 5.7. I do believe the Rebel can only come with a 5.7, but you just have your choice between the e-torque and the non-e-torque engine. I do like the way they did the hood here. I think it looks uh, quite classy and overall a good appearance. Looking into the back, nothing to really denote here. I do want to just make a quick comment on how well this tailgate drops. Obviously it is damped, and then to lift it is extremely light, just using two fingers there, and exceptional job. So, all right, let's take a look at the interior. You do have keyless entry here, so I put my hand behind the panel. You can see the mirrors are detecting that. You do have your blind spot monitor uh, triangle there, and these are heated defrost mirrors. Uh, or excuse me, defrosting mirrors, obviously. And then you have a little, uh, kind of a towing mirror right here. And I have used this with our travel trailer on our Bighorn, and I can actually see very well around the truck. Now taking a look at the inside of the truck, you'll see that you do have red accents uh, throughout. You have it in the stitching of the steering wheel. You have these semi-metallic accent strips throughout the entire truck. It's got a nice slight flake to it, but overall, rather subdued it's not too bright so I'm glad to see that you do have red stitching you have a tire track pattern or tire tread I guess you should say and I believe it actually matches the tires that are on this truck as the Dura track if I recall you have your standard rebel badging red backing to the headrest same metallic accents on the steering wheel then coming onto the side you have soft, soft touch materials up top it's even softer on the armrest here a nice solid grab handle for closing the door. Some faux diamond plating right here as well. And then again, soft touch materials here. A lot of leather I'm seeing here, which is nice, but not so much so that you have to be concerned about your elbow resting up here and wearing over time. It's it's, it's hard enough that, you know, it's it's got some flex to it. You're not really seeing it there, but it's it's still, you know, rugged, I guess I should say. All right, now let's climb right on in and see how it is from the driver's seat. And from the driver's seat, the assumption is that you like red. Now, I personally think this looks great inside the truck. I think it really matches the nature of the vehicle. Uh, to those of you that like a real conservative interior, it, it may not be for you, but I like that the reds are subdued enough that it's not overbearing. The red that you're seeing here is actually a bit brighter than what I would say it truly is. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting. That's a little bit closer to what you really expect. I made a little tweak there. So again, just a lighter, a d rather dark, uh, toned down red leather. It's not too bright. Now starting from the left here, you'll find you have power folding mirrors, quite appreciated for the size of the vehicle, especially in tight parking spots or garages. You do have your window con or your headlamp controls. You have your fog lamps, bed lamp, interior lighting brightness, power adjustable pedals, and electronic parking brake. Vents with easy to control uh, adjustments for the opening, whether it's open or closed. So you have your vents here with easy to control knob for turning off the vent and kicking it back on. Looking at your cluster, you can see that the Rebel text is lit, which is nice. I like the red lighting there, looks exceptional. And then your gauges are actually the same color red that you get in the rest of these dials. And it really ties together nicely. I like the font they have for temperature and gasoline. Overall, I really like how these gauges look. Uh, no complaints there. Uh, note that this does say 12 kilometers. It's in miles per hour. I think they just didn't make adjustments to it just yet. The truck was just activated for uh, out of transport mode. So you can see vehicle info here. You have tire pressure, coolant, all well, you can read. So a good array of information for the vehicle. I actually do like that you can adjust these corners. I keep this top corner on ours when we're towing. Uh, to be the trailer brake percentage. So I can see how that's adjusting, how much pressure I'm putting on the trailer, and then I can obviously keep my good size speedometer up top or in the main screen. This truck does have start-stop start, stop technology, which you can deactivate right here. 
it's a wild system in my opinion. It really is something to get used to. It's just odd when you stop the vehicle, the engine shuts off, but it does start right up as soon as you need to go. So I really don't have any complaints with that. It really, in my opinion, works quite well. It's just kind of a, an annoyance that I guess you'll have to get used to. Now note, this is actually only used, I believe, on the e-torque engine. And the whole thing with that e-torque is it has a belt start generator uh, and really a, kind of a hybrid system to offer up to 130 foot-pounds of torque, I believe. It's either 110 or 130 um, at certain ranges of RPM. Typically, it's you're gonna find it really down low and I can tell you I've been driving this truck and I think I can really feel the difference there. Our, our Bighorn has the 5.7 and this one just has a little bit more pickup uh, right from the dead dig there. I think overall it's a great system. You know, extra fuel economy is great, extra power is great. Typically, you know, you pick one or the other. So I'm glad to see that FCA found a technology that works this way. Uh, I just would be interested in seeing how the longevity of the system works and how much time you know, if people have issues. So I guess if I were buying a pickup uh, myself, I would probably get it. I've always had pretty good luck with FCA's products. I know people in the comments section may have mixed uh, opinions there, but for us, we've owned <laughs> quite a few uh, FCA cars and they've all given us a uh, great track record, great reliability and great service. So uh, in, and when I say service, I say service at the dealership, not necessarily that I'm needing to go to service. So overall, no complaints. The distance that you've towed with the trailer, audio, your stored messages, and your standard screen setup. So great great setup here. I do like the range. It actually is a rolling dial that just goes down as obviously you're consuming fuel, or rather it goes up if you're looking at it here. It's just a nice seamless look and works quite well. Looking at the screen here, you'll see that it has a very good resolution. This is probably the best screen I've ever seen in a vehicle. I can tell you now from my 16 charger, the resolution definitely is higher on this particular screen here. I can't turn the radio on due to copyright constraints, but I will say this does sound uh, very nice. This one does not have the Alpine radio. I know ours does. So just something to look at. Even with the stock radio, it does sound very good as well. Standard FM AM radio controls, your media, you have USB inputs and disc, Bluetooth and auxiliary. Your climate controls are here as well. Obviously, we're looking at, uh, if you're from Canada, you're going to love this video. Everything's going to make sense. So you get Celsius here, but you get the idea. You can control your heated seats, your heated wheel, all from that screen. And you can see everything is moving very fluidly. There's no delays. There's no hiccups, no waiting. This is what I love about this this Uconnect software is it just works well. And there's no no none of the hiccups you used to see in the old systems uh, through other manufacturers and even yet today in some of the new car manufacturers you'll see the same delays and things and I think we're too far along in technology we have great processors out there you're spending you know this truck right here is $51,000 it's just I think at this price point or at any price point with the you know kind of where cars are priced these days you shouldn't have to be dealing with these delays back to your controls you do have instant access to your backup cam and guys look how clear that is I mean, that is spectacular. You have a click little uh, plus here to see your trailer bar, trailer ball, so works quite well. And you can use that going down the road. It does just time out after a little while. Your phone controls, I'm not gonna pair the phone. I do like that there is an option to essentially do not disturb when your phone is paired. And if somebody text messages you, it'll simply reply back and say, I'm driving right now, I'll call you back, sent by Uconnect. So it's a great anti-texting feature. Uh, this day and age, and I think, uh, I really just want to thank FCA for putting that inside the cars. And it's nice, too, if you just want to ignore people and kind of blame it on the fact that you were driving, too. That's quite all right. A lot of settings inside of here. Safety and driving assistance. You got park sense volumes. You have rear park sense braking assist, which actually will hit the brakes for you if you're about to hit something backing up. Your trailer length for blind spot. You can adjust if you want to automatic or just set it to max. There's just quite a few things to go off of. You got rain sense wipers, he'll start assist, different lighting options if I go down here. And you can turn on your DRLs, flashlights with lock, auto parking brake. I mean there's just a lot of options here to go through within the screen that are very easily accessible. Looking further down, 
you will see the heated seats. I did have these on, obviously, as you just saw they were on, and I just turned them on there. The heat, the cloth heats exceptionally well. Uh, no concerns there. I actually really prefer cloth seats that are heated compared to leather. Uh, just personal preference there. But overall, it heats quickly and I really don't have any concerns in that area. You do have dual zone climate control, simple, easy to read setup. Good feeling knobs here as well. And everything transfers to the screen pretty quickly. You have some really well built switches here. They're, they have a good solid feel to them. Really don't have any concerns in that build quality. In the past, you've seen kind of chintzy buttons and I that would drive me nuts, but these you just press it and you get a real easy audible alert that you're turning those systems off on your center cluster. You have your tow haul mode and your stability control. This is your integrated trailer brake controller with the adjustment of gains, which is displaying on the center screen. You have a CD player easily tucked away. I'm glad they don't have it up here somewhere. I know they're not used very often, but just to have one down here, I'd rather have it than just a black you know, piece of plastic. So thank you for including that FCA. I'll uh, try to try to make use of it. And then over here you have your USB ports and then kind of future proofing, future, future proofing yourself here with USB-C. So great to see that. I'm glad they're incorporating that already. An auxiliary port. You do have a cutout here for your cell phone and it fits quite nicely and it just pushes in and it holds your phone up to the back. And depending on the trim you get, you can actually get wireless charging uh, in that spot as well. You can see you've got a very deep center console. This does push forward for your cup holder here. Another center storage bin, spot for coins. Then your console lid. This lifts up. You do have some formulas and things along those lines here on the back for reference, which is just a good use of the space. Again, this could have just been plain plastic, but someone at FCA thought about that. And then you have a very deep storage console here as well. And you can see there is a little plate that flips up that has the last four generations of Ram pickups listed as well. And it does have a max fill line, which is a gun, just a nice little touch, just so you know how much uh, stuff you can really put in there. And one thing to note here, you do have a dial for your transmission controls, which is, we saw in the last generation, I do like how this feels, it stops at park. It's got a, it's a, it's a metal knob. I mean, it doesn't feel cheap. It's got a nice solid feel. So just really no complaints on the way that's set up. With the Rebel, you do get a axle lock, or locking rear axle, I guess I should say. So you just press the button and it says rear axle locked, and the rear axle is unlocked if I press it again. And this is hill descent control. And then this is how you obviously turn off the auto start stop. So systems work well and truck just is really going, built very well. Taking a look over here, you'll see you do have a upper glove box that's open just through pressing that button. It is illuminated. And then another glove box here on the down below. And that's about it for the passenger side. Now let's take a look at the rear of the truck and see what the back seat passengers have to see. All right, now stepping into the back of the pickup here, you'll see the same tread design. You do have a center console here for the back seat passengers as well. It does stop before resting on the bottom down here. A nice little touch. And then in terms of storage, both of these seats fold up and you have a completely load flat floor here with little pockets for storage. And it looks like if you want, you can actually remove that completely just through the knob there. So, good little touch. This would be a great spot for jumper cables if you need be, but you, obviously you can adapt. You have these RAM boxes here on the floor. It does have a little tape measure here basically, up to 15 inches. And these do come right out, so you can dump whatever's inside if you have ice or whatever you may be using it for. I do like the tie outs here as well. They do move, so that's a nice little touch. And then this is for your floor mats, so obviously they don't move. Backseat passengers are treated with the same USB-C ports and USB that you found in the front, as well as a 115 uh, power outlet with up to 400 watts of power supply. 
The back of the seats are red just again, so hopefully your kids like red as well. And that is about it. All right, guys, now let's buzz through some of the options there on the window sticker. This is obviously the Rebel, and it comes in at $47,495 uh, as a base price. And that's really giving you all those off-road goodies, such as the lock and axle. You got your standard Duratrack tires. And I believe it actually does come with a one-inch lift from the factory, too. So uh, I'll verify that and add it to my editing here. But overall, it just gives you a good package right from the get-go. You get steel bumpers, just a good solid uh, item to build off of. You got nice tow hooks here in the front are metal. So as a base, you're looking at $47,495. If you add the luxury or the level two package, it'll cost you $3,000, but it gives you the bigger screen. It'll give you the park sense front and rear, the heated and front seat steering wheel, and just a plethora of other options. So in my opinion, it's something that's a great value at $3,000. The e-torque engine 5.7 is $2,645. Now that's gonna obviously be an upgrade from the base, but it's a great powertrain. I think it'll make or break the truck. And that does come with active noise control, just as a part of that 5.7. And then your uh, blind spot and cross monitor detection 600, and the trailer brake controller is 295. With destination, you're looking at 55,725. So in the grand scheme of things, in the pickup market, trucks aren't cheap, but I think they really are doing well here at the Ram brand at providing a good value for the pickup trucks. And this one really kind of hits it right head on the nail there. So. Now, if you guys have any questions on this truck, please feel free to comment below. I try to respond to all uh, meaningful comments, so uh, just drop them below. Give me a like, press subscribe. You're going to see quite a few FCA vehicles coming through my channel, and I'm always happy to help answer any questions and really make that car buying process easier for you. All right, guys, take care. All right. Now before we set off, I just want to show you guys a quick demonstration of how quick the electronic start stop start, like how quickly the electronic start stop works or activates. So I just pulled into a church parking lot here and I'm going to turn right and you're going to see how quickly the engine starts up once I press or let off the brake. You can see it was very seamless. You got a little uh, blurb from the exhaust there, just obviously knowing that the engine was starting up. and. Overall, it worked very, very well. Just going down the road here, the first thing you notice really is how quiet the cabin is. The 5.7 does offer active noise cancellation and it's quite apparent. It's, it's very quiet in here. You still get the typical pickup ride, but it's very, very, very soft and you still get your typical. You can see going over the little bump there, the truck was very composed. Obviously, it wasn't a huge bump. You got a slight little shake through the cabin, as you should expect with a body on frame vehicle. But overall, the truck rides very well. You do have coil spring uh, in the rear versus your standard leaf spring that you get in most pickups. And then you do have the optional air suspension as well with these trucks and you can get that with the Rebel. Again, coming to a stop, the truck turns off, and then when I let off, the truck will start back up. Now that was by no means to the floor. It was just a quicker takeoff than normal, but you can see the engine is not taxed by doing so. It really pulls itself along the road very easily. No issues merging in traffic and just just works well. And it's nice to see that, you know, when we were shopping for our Bighorn, our, our 19 Bighorn, we found, we shopped all the competitors and we found uh, for GM, we didn't 100% love the engine, the 5.3 at least and the exhaust note was pretty quiet. And then the cost to get a center console in that truck was just was just ridiculous. I mean, there were $60,000 trucks with bench seats, which we thought was kind of odd. And the same with the Ford, and we really didn't like the EcoBoost engine. Uh, just, we just, seems like that's a lot of power to be pushing out of uh, three liters, or three and a half liters, rather.
and then the Toyota had a good engine in our in our opinion, but we didn't like the sound system even in the JBL with the particular 1794 that we were looking at. With FCA, we've bought quite a few cars from them, and they've always held up well. We've always enjoyed the powertrains. We like the dealership support. It's just been good cars to us. And I know everyone's got their own opinion and may bash FCA for whatever reason they feel. And that's fine. Everyone has their own opinion. But for us, they've been they've been good. And that's all I can offer to you is just my opinion. So this truck, I think, would last the owner's just as long as really they, they'll need. I think these trucks are built to last. They've got a good ZF transmission, a good 5.7 liter engine, a good solid build, a solid frame, and what you need to do is go to your dealership and ride drive one for yourself. I understand watching the reviews helps out quite a bit, but overall it's something that you really can't get a feel for how these brakes are feeling right now. I can tell you they feel great, feel very planted, and that they towed our travel trailer very well even without, I'm sure without the trailer brakes, it would have done well. But it's something that you have to get a feel for yourself. Really how this 5.7 works. How does that dealership treat you? Those are all things that you're gonna have to really get a take on. So I ask you just stop watching my video, go to your local dealer, give this truck a try and see what you think. And I think you're not gonna, I don't think you're gonna walk away disappointed, but I do ask if you have questions along the way before you leave or when you get back, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, subscribe to my channel and uh, like the video if this was helpful to your car search. I will be putting out more FCA vehicles here very soon. So uh, I thank you for your continued support and your viewership. Take care.